This second PowerPoint presentation focuses only on the issue of misclassification. It is a concept covered in epidemiology under bias, but here we will look again in depth at pre predicting whether the misclassification differs between your groups or if the misclassification affects everyone equally. If you know the likely direction of the misclassification, you can predict how it will influence your results. The objective of this is to show you how to apply the concept of misclassification that does not differ, i.e. is non-differential, between groups. In this lecture, I will show you that non-differential misclassification will alter a risk ratio or an odds ratio to attenuate the effect. In other words, a risk ratio or odds ratio will go towards one. In the case that the misclassification is different or differential between the groups, you can make use of the way you imagine the results and how they differ to predict the impact. This slide shows an example of misclassification from Table 7-6 on page 135 from the Rothman book we used in epidemiology. The 2 by 2 table here is simply showing the example of an odds ratio table comparing cases and controls in terms of their reported fat intake. The 2 by 2 table shows that of the 700 cases, 250 have a high fat diet and 450 have a diet that does not classify as being high fat. By comparison, of the 1,000 controls, only 100 have a high fat diet, and the remaining 900 have a diet that is not classified as consuming a high fat diet. Next, using the example from Rothman, this odds ratio table illustrates the concept that non-differential misclassification will bring the odds ratio closer to 1. This example shows that if everyone in the non-high fat diet group is misclassified, it drives the odds ratio down. This is an example where the misclassification is not different between the cases and controls. So the 20% misclassification is the same for everyone. The blue numbers show what would happen if 20% of the non-high fat diet group were misclassified. So they are counted as having a high fat diet even though they really don't. In this case, the true odds ratio would be five, but the odds ratio you would see from your data, the one in blue, is 2.4. This is because when the misclassification is the same in cases and controls, misclassification waters down the odds ratio and makes the two groups look like they are more similar than they really are. This slide is just showing the same thing but a more extreme example where misclassification occurs both in the high fat and in the non-high fat diet group. So the odds ratio comes down even more closer to one. The non-differential misclassification in the non-high fat diet group, as shown here, is the same as in the previous slide. The new misclassification being added is additional non-differential misclassification in the high fat group, in which 20% of the high fat group is misclassified and put into the non-high fat diet group. The result of having non-differential misclassification both for the high fat diet and the non-high fat diet groups will bring the odds ratio further down from 2.4 to 2. The red numbers just show the 20% who are misclassified going from the high fat group to the non-high fat group. In summary, when non, with non-differential misclassification, the odds ratio always goes down because the misclassification causes the two groups to appear more similar and waters down the true effects. When it, the exposure is misclassified equally for cases and controls, cases and controls appear to be more similar, diluting the true effects and creating an odds ratio or risk ratio 
that is what we call in epidemiology attenuated or closer to one. In reality, cases and controls remember their diet differently, a result that would cause differential misclassification. Differential misclassification can go either direction. Here is an example where the difference would result in an attenuated odds ratio or an odds ratio closer to one. Imagine if the controls who consume a non-high fat diet are misclassified as having a high fat diet. This bring the, uh, brings the odds ratio down because controls were wrongly classified as having a high fat diet, making them more similar to the cases than is true. Differential misclassification can also go the other way. This slide shows an example where only the cases are misclassified. So taking the original odds ratio, imagine if the 20% misclassification of the non-high fat diet group was misclassified as being high fat. If that were the case, it would inflate the odds ratio. So the odds ratio from those results would appear to be 8.5, even if the true odds ratio were actually five. This example is to show you how you could imagine the misclassification might occur. And if you believe the cases are different from controls, think through how, the, how they might be different, shift the numbers around, and see what the impact of the misclassification might look like. In this way, you can predict whether the misclassification drives the odds ratio up or down. The last example where the odds ratio actually goes up is quite realistic because dietary data is often based on a 24-hour recall. It is common that cases who have been newly diagnosed with a disease will have changed their intake as a result of the disease. So it is not strange that the cases who might really have been eating a high-fat diet would report consuming a low-fat diet in the past 24 hours even though this doesn't reflect their high-fat intake exposure that relates to the illness. So the impact of misclassification when it comes to dietary data will depend on behavior and also recall. Alternatively, imagine another scenario where cases are asked to recall their diet from 10 years ago. They might al almost remember, they might also remember differently from controls, but it might be that they remember better and in that case, they might remember having consumed a high fat diet and more of the cases might report a high fat diet compared to the controls. The issue is whether the misclassification is different between cases or controls. If it is not different, the odds ratio becomes weaker than the true effect. So that means if there is misclassification that is not different between cases and controls, the true odds ratio would have been a stronger association than what you see in your results. If you can imagine the impact of misclassification, you can rearrange the numbers to where they would be so that even if the misclassification is differential, you can still predict whether the misclassification watered down the odds ratio or amplified it. In that case, the true odds ratio is either stronger or weaker than what you see. The purpose of this is to think through the type of misclassification to imagine how it would influence the odds ratio reported by your peers. Start by asking whether the misclassification is likely to be different between cases and controls. If not, misclassification would always cause the odds ratio to go down. If there is a difference between cases and controls, specify how. Are cases more likely to be misclassified? Specifically, how are cases more likely to be to report being exposed or being not exposed? Imagine how the misclassification would look so you can create a scenario to shift the numbers.
In that case, imagine the impact of the misclassification on the odds ratio. Would the misclassification have weakened the association or brought the odds ratio down? If so, the true odds ratio is likely to be stronger. Or would the misclassification have inflated the odds ratio, causing the odds ratio to reflect a stronger association than is likely to be true? In order to sort it out, imagine the scenario and its impact on the odds ratio by shifting the numbers only in the group where the misclassification is expected to be greater. That will help you to visualize whether the odds ratio would go up or down. In the literature, most examples are about misclassification of the exposure definition, but sometimes the case definition is misclassified. If this is an appropriate angle, you can talk about misclassification of the case definition. We have only talked about misclassification by exposure, but what if the case definition is incorrect? In that case, if the misclassification is the same for the exposed and unexposed, it is non-differential misclassification, which will always bring the odds ratio to unity. When cases are misclassified as controls, it will make the cases and controls look much more like each other. But case definition misclassification can be differential by exposure. In that case, it matters whether the exposed are more likely to be misclassified as cases in which the odds ratio increases because the A group is artificially inflated. The odds ratio you see is inflated and the true odds ratio is actually less strong than what you see in your data. If the exposed are misclassified as controls, on the other hand, the B group is inflated and the odds ratio goes down. In that case, the true odds ratio is stronger than what you see. Carrying the example further, if the misclassification occurs such that the unexposed are being misclassified as cases, B is inflated and the odds ratio decreases. In that case, the true odds ratio is stronger than what you see because misclassification has obscured the result. Finally, if the unexposed are more likely to be misclassified as controls, the D group is inflated, the odds ratio increases and is therefore artificially inflated. The true odds ratio is weaker than what you see.